English Language Academy. Practice makes perfect. Listen and practice. My weekends are busy and exciting. My weekdays at home are busy too. I have two sons, Dylan seven, and Dakota five. Every morning I get up one hour before them at six, and I go to the gym. I come home and I make breakfast. Then I take them to school. On Mondays I always go shopping. I buy all the food for the week. I often cook dinner in the evenings, but not every day because I don't like cooking. Fortunately, my husband Don loves cooking. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I visit my father. He lives on the next block. Every afternoon, I pick up the kids from school. In the evenings, Don and I usually relax, but sometimes we visit friends. We never go out on Friday evenings because I start work so early on Saturdays. Listen and practice. When I first saw Oliver, I thought he looked warm and friendly, and more attractive than Alexander. He was tall, with short blond hair, and he had amazing blue eyes, kind of like the actor Ryan Gosling. He was kind of shy and quiet at first, but when we started talking, he relaxed, and we found we had a lot of things in common. We both like books and movies. He was generous too. He wanted to pay for everything. I really enjoyed the evening. When it was time to go, he asked for my phone number and said he wanted to meet again. We walked out of the restaurant and went to look for a taxi, and then something happened. And I knew that it was impossible for me to go out with him. He said, "Finally," and took out a pack of cigarettes. Listen and practice. Books. Many people made this book. Do you know how we make books? An author writes the words, and an editor checks the words. Other people draw pictures or take photos for the book. Designers use a computer to put the words, photos, and pictures into pages. In factories, printing machines print the pages on paper. They print sixteen pages on one big piece of paper, then other machines cut the paper into pages. People used machines to fix the pages of this book together. Sometimes, people sew the pages together. Then they fix them to the cover with glue. Clothes. We make clothes from lots of different materials, like wool and cotton. To make jeans. People use cotton fabric. They cut the fabric into different shapes for pieces of the jeans, like the legs and pockets. They use a sewing machine to sew these pieces together. Then they sew buttons and a zipper on the front of the jeans.
People use wool to make clothes like hats or sweaters. At home, some people use wool and knitting needles to knit clothes. They knit different pieces of the clothes, like the arms, the front, and the back. Then they sew the pieces together. In factories, people use knitting machines to knit clothes. Space Colony Where could humans go if we had to leave Earth? Our solar system is huge. We don't know that much about it. There's no other place besides Earth that can naturally sustain human life. Living things on Earth need air, water, food, shelter, light, and nutrients to survive. We also need other conditions, like appropriate temperatures. The Earth is surrounded by a layer of gases called the atmosphere. It's essential to life on Earth. It provides many things we need to live. One example is the air we breathe. There is another place in our solar system where some of these things exist. It's a moon of the planet Jupiter, called Europa. Its conditions could be suitable for humans. Europa's atmosphere is made up of mostly oxygen. Scientists also believe Europa's surface has water. Of course, it's not perfect. The highest temperature on Europa is minus 160 degrees Celsius. No human can survive that. There are other problems too, but a space colony may allow us to survive there. Scientists are studying Europa. They want to find out if there's life there. They want to learn if humans could survive there. Plastic Products We make a lot of products from plastic, like bottles and toys. To make a plastic product, machines put hot plastic in a mold. Then the plastic is the same shape as the mold. To make some products, like bottles, machines also blow air into the molds. To make a new plastic product, like a toy, people draw it and then make a model of it. In a factory, people use the model to make a mold for each part of the toy. Machines put hot plastic in the molds to make plastic parts. People or machines fix the parts together, and they paint the toys. Then the toys go to stores. Making Products by Hand About 200 years ago, there weren't many factories or machines and people made many products by hand. Today, some people still make products by hand. They use tools to make products like chairs, clocks, jewelry, and musical instruments. It takes years to learn how to make these things. People make guitars from wood. They cut thin pieces of wood to make the front and back of the guitar. To make the sides, they put long, thin pieces of wood in water. Then they use hot tools to make the wood the right shape for the sides. 
they fix these pieces together with glue. Later, they make the neck of the guitar and they put the strings on it. One of the first things I noticed in Valencia is that people eat out a lot. They spend a lot of time in cafes. You find people having breakfast or tea, not just lunch and dinner. People who work go out to have coffee. They don't have it in their office. Another thing I notice, I find that the women here talk very fast and very loudly, much more than the men. Women dress very well, especially older women and they always look immaculate. Finally, there's a myth that the Spanish don't work hard, but I don't think it's true. It's just that they work different hours. People have a long lunch break, but they leave work very late. My first impression of Alexander was that he was much older than me. In fact, he was 32, but I thought he was older. But when we started talking, I really liked him. He was extroverted and funny, and he had a very good sense of humor. He works for a TV station, and he told me a lot of good stories about his work. He was also interested in the same things as me, art and music, and we talked a lot about that. Physically, he wasn't really my type. It's hard to say why. He was tall and dark and very good-looking, and he had a nice smile. But there just wasn't any chemistry between us. When I first saw Oliver, I thought he looked warm and friendly, and more attractive than Alexander. He was tall, with short blonde hair, and he had amazing blue eyes, kind of like the actor Ryan Gosling. He was kind of shy and quiet at first, but when we started talking, he relaxed, and we found we had a lot of things in common. We both liked books and movies. He was generous, too, he wanted to pay for everything. I really enjoyed the evening. When it was time to go, he asked for my phone number and said he wanted to meet again. We walked out of the restaurant and went to look for a taxi. And then something happened. And I knew that it was impossible for me to go out with him. He said, finally and took out a pack of cigarettes. Listen and practice. Medicines made from plants. When early people tasted plants to test which ones were safe to eat, they also discovered plants that cured illness and fever. These plants were the first medicines. One of the oldest books about medicines made from plants was written in China more than 4,000 years ago. Most early medicines were made from parts of plants, like flowers. People ate the plant parts or they made them into drinks. Sometimes they made the plant parts into lotions to put on their body. Today, many people use medicines made from plants. For example, people use lotions made from aloe vera plants to make sore skin feel better. Listen and practice. Vaccines today. Today, doctors and nurses inject vaccines. They use a needle to put the vaccine into a person's arm or another part of their body. 
The vaccine is a weak type of a virus or bacteria. When a vaccine is inside the body, the body starts to make antibodies to attack the vaccine. Antibodies are substances in the blood that can kill viruses and bacteria. When the body has learned how to make the antibodies, it's ready to kill viruses or bacteria when they get inside the body. This prevents the person getting that disease in the future. Listen and practice. Hospitals in the past. Today, some people go to hospital to get well when they are ill. In the past, some hospitals were so bad that they made ill people worse. From about 1,000 years ago in Europe, monks and nuns cared for patients in hospitals. They weren't doctors or nurses, and they didn't cure the patients. They gave patients food and a bed, and they said prayers with them. The worst disease at this time was the plague. Monks and nuns cared for many patients who had the plague because the patients had to stay in hospital until they died. The plague killed millions of people in Europe and in Asia. Listen and practice. From about 1,000 years ago in the Middle East, there were many hospitals. There were lots of doctors and nurses to care for the patients, and they made medicines for the patients too. Doctors treated everyone who came there, and they taught new doctors and nurses about diseases. These hospitals had different wards for different diseases. There were also pools and fountains because doctors believed that the sound of moving water helped patients to rest. Listen and practice. I go to a boarding school, so I don't live with my parents during the semester. What I like is being with my friends all the time. Whether we're working or just chatting, it's great to know there's always someone there. There's also a lot of freedom. I don't have to tell my parents where I'm going, who I'm going with, you know. Normally, Monday is my favorite day because I only have two classes on a Monday. But I'm having a very bad day today because I have homework from every one of my teachers and I have to do it now. Listen and practice. I work in a restaurant in Miami. I have two days off a week, usually Monday and Wednesday. But my favorite day of the week is, in fact, Friday, even though I work that day. It's the best night because all my friends come into the restaurant and we have a great time. There's a real buzz to the place, and it doesn't feel like work at all. Time just flies by. The restaurant's being redecorated right now, so everything's a little crazy. Listen and practice. Hi, Adam. Thank you for helping me plan Grandpa's birthday party. Grandpa was very happy. Everyone had a great time. It was a sunny and warm day. It was a perfect day to have a party in the park. Grandma's birthday is next month. Can you help me again? We can have the party at my house. There will be 28 guests, the same as Grandpa's party. Can you help me invite Grandma's friends? I will give you their phone numbers. I will invite the family. Grandma likes the color purple. 
I'd like to decorate the room with purple balloons. We can ask the guests to bring purple flowers for Grandma. If everyone brings five flowers, we will have 140 flowers. She will be very happy. David will be busy, so he can't bake the birthday cake. So I will order cakes from the bakery. If I buy four cakes, I can cut each cake into seven pieces. We will also need seven liters of juice for everyone. What do you think? Rita. Listen and practice. I'm sure you have heard the phrase global warming. Scientists use the phrase for two kinds of warming. The first one is an increase in air temperature. The average air temperature on Earth is almost one degree higher than in 1960. This may sound small, but it's really very big for such a short time. Its effects are troubling. Glaciers, which are rivers of ice, are disappearing in mountains. A mountain in Africa called Kilimanjaro once had a lot of snow on it. Now almost all the snow is gone. Warmer air also helps diseases spread farther. And there is even worse news. The increase gets faster year by year. The average temperature might rise another 4 degrees in the next 50 years. The other part of global warming is in the oceans. Seawater temperatures in most parts of the sea have gone up more than one degree since 1960. This has caused a lot of problems. Much of the ice around the Earth's North Pole melts every summer. Warmer ocean water has helped cause more heavy rainstorms in Europe. Sea animals that a lot of people like, such as penguins, have more trouble finding enough cool water. Lots of fish are dying. Humans cause much of the trouble. Factories and cars put gas into the air. This gas traps heat on Earth. Also, people cut down forests that could help keep the planet cooler. A bigger population means more factories, more cars, and fewer trees. Trees help keep the planet cooler, so the loss of so much forest is a big problem. Listen and practice. Cars. To make a car, people use a metal called steel to make a strong chassis. People also use steel to make big shapes for the outside of the car. Then robots fix the outside to the chassis. A conveyor moves the chassis around the car factory, and people fix many parts on the chassis. Later, other machines paint the car. Then people fix other parts on the car, like the engine, doors, wheels, and seats for people to sit on. There are about 35,000 parts in a car. Listen and practice. 
Mike and I live on a beautiful farm in Missouri. I know we're very lucky, but it's hard work. We never have a day off on weekends or holidays or any day of the year. We have to feed the animals and take care of the fields. Now we're harvesting, so we aren't getting any rest at all. But I suppose our favorite day is Wednesday, because that's the day we generally get together with friends and prepare a wonderful meal. Listen and practice. I'm a police officer. I like my job because it's challenging, but I live for surfing. I go as often as I can. I'm opening two shops that sell surfboards in the next few months. The boards are made here in the U.S. Sunday is my favorite day of the week. I hardly ever work on a Sunday. I get up as early as I can and spend the day at the beach. Listen and practice. My name's Adam. I'm from Sydney in Australia. I'm married. I'm a doctor. My hospital is in downtown Sydney. It's a great building. The doctors are really good. Listen and practice. Hi, Adam. Thank you for helping me plan Grandpa's birthday party. Grandpa was very happy. Everyone had a great time. It was a sunny and warm day. It was a perfect day to have a party in the park. Grandma's birthday is next month. Can you help me again? We can have the party at my house. There will be 28 guests, the same as Grandpa's party. Can you help me invite Grandma's friends? I will give you their phone numbers. I will invite the family. Grandma likes the color purple. I'd like to decorate the room with purple balloons. We can ask the guests to bring purple flowers for Grandma. If everyone brings five flowers, we will have 140 flowers. She will be very happy. David will be busy, so he can't bake the birthday cake. So I will order cakes from the bakery. If I buy four cakes, I can cut each cake into seven pieces. We will also need seven liters of juice for everyone. What do you think? Rita. Listen and practice. Well, so many teenagers seem to think life is about just one thing, you know? Money and fame. They think it will bring them happiness. Honestly, I would hate to be famous. When I read the magazines and see all the photos of these rich, famous movie stars athletes and the like, it frightens me. They can't move without being followed and photographed. Usually, they have bodyguards. When I grow up, I just want to enjoy my work. If I earn lots of money, fair enough. But if I don't, I'll still be happy. I never want to be famous. That's scary stuff. Listen and practice. I'm closest to my twin, Nick. Obviously, we have so much in common. The same friends, the same soccer team, the same music. We go everywhere together. But we have crazy arguments about everything. We're like oil and water. I'm like my mom, calm and easygoing. Nick's like my dad, very bad-tempered. 
They fight like cats and dogs. But things have changed now that we're older. We appreciate each other more. The biggest difference is probably interests. I'm into all things history and politics, and Nick's interested in science and nature. But of course, we're a lot closer than just brothers and sisters. In a way, we're like one. I would trust him like I would trust no one else. Listen and practice. I think the person that I'm probably closest to is my sister. The thing I love about her is the way everyone knows her. It doesn't matter where we go. Everyone says, "Hi, Sarah. How you doing?" I'm just her little sister. People call me Baby Sarah, but that's fine. We're so different. We have big fights. She's so hyperactive and loud. She can't sit still. She has to have people around her, and everyone loves her. In many ways, she drives me crazy. She just can't think straight. Me, I'm a lot quieter. I'm happy on my own, but we're so proud of each other. Listen and practice. The person that I'm closest to in my family is probably my mother. She's the kind of person you can talk to about anything. She's very open, my mother, and I can talk to her about boyfriends, stuff that's bothering me at work, friendships, anything. We have our ups and downs, of course, but basically we have an easy relationship. We go shopping together. What I like about her is her attitude. She's young at heart, like me, not old-fashioned or anything like that. Listen and practice. The person I'm closest to in my family, I think, would be my father. We stay up late listening to music and talking a lot. What I like about him is that he's interesting and interested. He has a curiosity about life. We can talk about anything and everything. We have the same sense of humor, the same love of life. My friends all love him because he's so funny. He doesn't care what people think of him, and I guess that's great. He's pretty cool, my dad. Listen and practice. I'm closest to my grandmother. Um, my father, I don't really get along with. We don't really see eye to eye on anything. My mother, I hardly ever see. She's too busy. My grandmother and I like doing the same thing. Things. Um, we like watching TV and having lunch together. We love playing cards. And I think emotionally, I'm closer to her than I am to my parents because she and I have a similar attitude to life. I think we both like people. We're very outgoing, sociable, and open. Listen and practice. I have a new friend, Nora. We're the same in some ways, but different in other ways. Nora is very outgoing. She likes to be around people. I'm not really outgoing. I'm shy, but we're still good friends. She's also confident. In math class, she always shouts out the answers. She is sometimes right, but. Sometimes wrong. She doesn't care. She just tries. I like that about her. Listen and practice. 
The new guy in our class, Simon, is interesting to me. He's really good at art. He's creative and loves anime. He wants to be an anime artist someday, but he's also very good at math. He's probably the best student in our class, actually. He gets good grades easily, but he hardly studies. He's becoming a good friend. Listen and practice. I work in a coffee shop on weekends, and there's a new girl there. Her name's Kaylee. She's not hardworking at all and gets very impatient with customers. You know, sometimes customers need time to choose their order. Kaylee just looks the other way and taps her fingers like this. She also forgets the customer's orders and makes lots of mistakes. I don't think she'll have this job for very long. Listen and practice. It was about two o'clock in the morning, and suddenly I woke up. I heard a noise. I got out of bed and went slowly downstairs. There was a light on in the living room. I listened carefully. I could hear two men speaking very quietly. Burglars, I thought. Two burglars. Immediately, I ran back upstairs and called the police. I was really frightened. Fortunately, the police arrived quickly. They opened the front door and went into the living room. Then they came upstairs to find me. It's all right now, sir, they explained. We turned the television off for you. Listen and practice. Bacteria and disease. In 1864, a French scientist called Louis Pasteur discovered that bacteria in the air could cause disease. Then he had the idea that you could prevent disease by stopping bacteria getting into the body. A British surgeon called Joseph Lister used Louis Pasteur's idea to make the first antiseptics. Antiseptics were substances that could kill bacteria on tools used in surgery. They could also kill bacteria that make wounds become infected. This stopped many people dying after they had surgery. Listen and practice. Human beings are programmed to be afraid of things that can hurt them. Show a baby a picture of a snake or a big poisonous spider, and the baby will show fear. It's in our DNA. We are all afraid of some things, and that's good. But a phobia causes absolute terror, with physical symptoms such as a racing heart, sickness, and panic attacks. Phobias are usually the result of a bad experience. For example, a car crash can cause a fear of driving, but it's often just of ordinary things like balloons or a particular food. Some people are more likely to get phobias than others. It's in their genes. My job is to train people to conquer their phobia. First, we just talk about it and help the patient relax. Then we might show just a picture of their phobia. After that, we sometimes show a movie. And finally, we ask them to touch the object. In this way, phobias can normally be treated in just three or four sessions. Listen 
and practice. I have a really unusual phobia. It began when I was a little girl. I was staying with my grandmother, and she asked me to go upstairs and get her cardigan sweater. I opened the cabinet and saw this big, dark green sweater with huge black buttons hanging there. I was terrified. I started screaming. My grandmother rushed upstairs and finally managed to calm me down. But from then on, it was a problem. It was the buttons. All buttons made me feel uncomfortable. It's difficult for me to buy clothes. I try to find skirts and pants with just belts and zippers, but it's not easy. About a year ago, a button came off a colleague's jacket at work, and I had a panic attack. I've decided to see a therapist, but I'm embarrassed to say I'm scared of buttons. It sounds silly. Listen and practice. When I retire, I'm going to learn Russian. I can already speak French and Spanish, and I want to learn another language. And second, I'm going to learn to drive. It's terrible that I'm 59 and I can't drive. Then I'm going to buy a car and travel all over the world. Also, I'm not going to wear boring clothes anymore. I hate the skirts and blouses I wear every day for school. I'm going to wear jeans and t-shirts all the time. And when I return from my travels, I'm going to write a book and go on TV to talk about it. I'm going to become a TV star. Listen and practice. Well, there are a lot of things I can't do. I can't drive a car, but I want to take driving lessons soon. I can't speak French, but I can speak Spanish. My mother's Mexican, and we often go to Mexico to visit her family. My mother's a good cook. She can cook really well, not just Mexican food, all kinds of food. But I can't cook at all. I just love eating. What about sports? Well, I think I'm good at a lot of sports. I can play tennis, and of course I can swim, but I can't ski. Listen and practice. Caves. Caves were dark and didn't have windows. They protected people from bad weather and wild animals. The doors were made from animal skins. There was no kitchen or bathroom. Cave people cooked their food on fires. In hot weather, they didn't live in homes at all. They lived and slept outside. In some places where there were no natural caves, people had to dig caves out of the hills. Listen and practice. My favorite hobby is cooking, and that's a thing you do at home, obviously. I cook most days, though not every day. We also like eating out. What clothes and equipment do I need? Well, I often wear an apron to protect my clothes because you can make a mess when you're cooking, and tomatoes and spices change the color of your clothes forever. The most important piece of equipment is knives, and I'm very particular about my knives. They're German and very sharp, and I really take care of them. Obviously, in the kitchen, you need all sorts of things, like pots and pans and baking dishes and chopping boards and food mixers, but I don't really have a lot of gadgets. 
I like to keep things simple. What I like about cooking is the fact that it's creative and it's real. We have to eat, and what we eat is really important. So I like to know that what I'm eating and what my family is eating is good. I actually like all the preparation. Going out shopping, seeing the food, feeling it, smelling it, talking to the people who are selling it is half the fun. People often ask me what I like cooking, and I don't really have an answer. Whatever looks good and whatever I feel like cooking that day. The best part is, of course, seeing people enjoy my food. But what's also very important to me is seeing everyone happy and enjoying being at the table. It's about the occasion as much as the food. Listen and practice. My plans for the future? I'm not really sure. You see, I just left this job that I had for almost 10 years. I'm looking for a new job, but I don't want to take just any job. I'd like to find something that I will really enjoy doing. I've always wanted to paint, but I never really had the time to try it. So maybe I'll go back to school and take a few art classes while I'm looking for the right job. Listen and practice. How the heart works. In Egypt about 760 years ago, a famous doctor called Ibn al-Nafis studied the heart. He discovered that it moves blood around the body. He also discovered that blood travels from one side of the heart to the other side by moving through the lungs. In the lungs, the blood mixes with air. Blood leaves the heart through blood vessels called arteries, and it travels back to the heart through blood vessels called veins. In 1628, a British scientist called William Harvey wrote a book about this. Listen and practice. Family homes. Some people in the world live alone. Other people live with their families, other families, or with friends. In big towns, each family often has its own small home. But in many places in the world, lots of generations of a family often live together. This can be helpful because the grandparents can look after the children while the parents work. Sometimes, lots of different families live together in the same building, but on different floors. Who lives with you? Listen and practice. Different climates. The climate is different in different parts of the world. People build different homes depending on the climate. In temperate climates, the weather is usually mild. Homes are often built with bricks. Bricks keep water out and keep the homes dry. Homes often have large windows to let the sun in and a chimney so people can light a fire when it's cold. Where it rains a lot, people build houses with sloping roofs so that all the water runs off and doesn't get into their houses. Listen and practice. Transportation is the movement of people or goods from one place to another. We can transport things in the water, in the air, or over land. We can use animals, vehicles, 
or just our feet. Sometimes we travel for work, and sometimes for vacation or just for fun. People used horses and donkeys for transportation in lots of places. People also used camels in Africa, elephants in Asia, and llamas in South America. People still use animals for transportation today. Listen and practice. Homes for a queen. The Queen of the United Kingdom has two homes. When she is in London, she lives in Buckingham Palace. Part of the palace is now an art gallery, and you can also visit the gardens. The Queen's main home is Windsor Castle. It is one of the largest castles in the world. Many kings and queens are buried here. In November 1992, there was a big fire at the castle. It took 15 hours and a lot of water to put out the fire. The fire destroyed a big part of the castle, but most of it has been built again. Listen and practice. The Forbidden City The Forbidden City in Beijing, in China, is a big palace. There are palace gardens and nearly 1,000 buildings. It is the largest ancient palace in the world. It took 15 years to build and it is surrounded by a high wall and a moat. For 500 years, it was the winter home of the emperors of China. In summer, they moved to the Summer Palace, 12 kilometers away. Today, the Forbidden City is a museum. Some people say that the bricks in the wall around the palace were stuck together with rice and egg white. Listen and practice. The White House. The White House is in the USA. It is the home of the American president. The first White House was built in 1800, and 43 presidents have lived here. That's all the presidents except for the first president, George Washington. About 5,000 people visit the White House every day. The White House today has six floors, 132 rooms, 412 doors, three elevators, 147 windows, 28 fireplaces, 35 bathrooms, one tennis court, one bowling alley, one movie theater, one jogging track, one swimming pool. Listen and practice. Top Copy Palace Top Copy Palace is in Istanbul, in Turkey. It was the home of the sultans. Up to 4,000 people lived in the palace. There were schools, shops, libraries, gardens, and other buildings so the people who lived there never had to go out. Some parts of the palace were destroyed by fires and earthquakes, but you can visit the other parts because there is a museum.
About 800 people worked in the palace kitchens, and they cooked about 6,000 meals every day. Listen and practice. Molly Jones. Molly Jones is 25 and she's an artist. She lives in a small house by the ocean in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, near Boston. She always gets up late at 10 o'clock in the morning. She has a big breakfast, coffee, eggs, and toast. And then she goes to the beach with her dog. When she gets home, she works in her studio until 7 o'clock in the evening. She never eats lunch, but she always cooks a big dinner, and she often invites friends. After dinner, she usually listens to music or plays the piano. Sometimes she calls her brother, Luke, in New York. She goes to bed very late, at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Listen and practice. Well, on weekdays, I get up at 6.45. I have breakfast at 7 o'clock, and I go to school at 7.30. I have lunch at school with my friends. That's at 12.15. It's early in our school. I leave school at 2.30 in the afternoon, and I walk home with my friends. I get home at 3.30, have soda, maybe pizza, and watch television. I go to bed at 11 o'clock on weekdays, but later on the weekend, of course. Listen and practice. Yesterday was Sunday, so I got up late, about 11.30. I had a big breakfast, orange juice, toast, eggs, and coffee. Then I went shopping, just to the supermarket, and I bought some tea, some milk, and the Sunday paper. Then I just stayed home for the rest of the day. In the afternoon, I cleaned my house, and then I did some work on my computer for a bit. Then in the evening, I watched a movie on TV. I went to bed early, about 10 o'clock. Listen and practice. He gets up at 6 o'clock and he takes a shower. He has breakfast at 6.45. He leaves home at 7.15, and he goes to work by taxi. He has lunch, a soda and a sandwich, in his office at 1 o'clock. He always works late. He leaves work at 8 o'clock in the evening. He sometimes buys a pizza and eats it at home. He gets home at 9.15. He never goes out in the evening. He works at his computer from 9.30 to 11.30. He always goes to bed at 11.45. He watches television in bed. Listen and practice. What do I like about my job? Well, I like the people I work with. They're good fun. And the holidays. Yes, I get a lot of time off. This year, I've got two weeks at Christmas and three weeks in the summer, so I can go snowboarding in the winter and somewhere hot in the summer. Fantastic. Listen and practice. 
the most important thing for me is my children. I'm a secretary and I enjoy that, but no, I don't work full time because I like spending time with them. They're only little. Hannah's four and Jamie's six, so they need me. Anyway, it's what I want to do. I don't want to work full time at the moment. Listen and practice. I work for a large department store. I sell women's clothes and shoes. It's a good job because I like the other people who work here and the hours are good. Of course, I have to be polite to customers. Listen and practice. I don't like living here. This is a horrible area. The streets are dirty and it's quite dangerous as well. I want to get a dog and the town is not a good place for a dog. It's OK for a cat or a small animal, but dogs need somewhere to run about, I think. Listen and practice. How the oceans formed. Today, water covers about 70% of our planet. Billions of years ago, Earth's surface was dry and nothing lived here. Earth's atmosphere was also different. It had lots of carbon dioxide and other gases, but no oxygen. At first, there wasn't any liquid water on Earth's surface, but there was lots of water vapor in the atmosphere. This water vapor came from inside the planet when volcanoes erupted. When Earth cooled down, the water vapor condensed and formed clouds in the sky. Then it started to rain. After millions of years, liquid water covered most of our planet's surface. Listen and practice. Salt water. Today, the water in our oceans and seas is about 3.5% salt. Do you know why? When rain falls on land, some of it goes into lakes and rivers, and then into the oceans. As the water moves, it picks up salt from the ground. When the water goes into the ocean, it carries this salt with it. After many millions of years, this has made our ocean salty. Some lakes can be very salty, like Lake Asal in Djibouti in Africa. In this lake, the water is more than 35% salt and no plants or animals can live there. The salt water comes from underground hot springs. When the hot water evaporates into the air, it leaves the salt in the lake. Listen and practice. Teenagers today have a bad reputation. People say that they are lazy and messy and that they do very little to help their parents around the house. But there are some teenagers for whom this description is just not true at all. It is estimated that there are more than 1.4 million teenagers in the U.S. who have to look after a member of their family, their mother or father or brother or sister. In many cases, these young helpers, or caregivers as they are called, are doing things like feeding, washing, and taking care of family members, as well as doing their schoolwork. Listen and practice. People on Earth
About 200,000 years ago, early people only lived in Africa. Today, almost 7 billion people live all over Earth. People have changed our planet in many ways. Some places on Earth haven't changed very much. They are natural areas, like rainforests and national parks. Natural areas are important because they are homes for many plants and animals. We need to care for these areas so that plants and animals can live there in the future. In other areas, people have changed many things. In rural areas, farmers have cut down trees and they have cleared land to grow crops for people to eat. In urban areas, like towns and cities, people have built lots of homes and other buildings. They have also built roads, bridges, and tunnels. Listen and practice. Outside the city, there is more land for homes. People often have gardens or land to grow vegetables. Some people live in big houses detached from each other. Detached houses have space all around them. Other people live in houses called bungalows or ranch houses. The old building below is called a cottage. It is made of bricks and has a thatched roof. People in many parts of the world build homes with thatched roofs. Listen and practice. High-tech homes. In the future, what technology will homes have? Scientists say that we will be able to use one computer to watch television, look at the Internet, turn the lights on and off, and tell us if there's a burglar in the house. They say that lights will turn on when we walk into a room, and refrigerators will tell us when food is bad to eat. We will be able to talk to other people through an electronic screen and see who's at the front door on our television. Listen and practice. What are my plans for the future? Well, I just finished school, and I had to borrow a lot of money before I could graduate. So first, I'm going to get a job so that I can start to pay all that money back. Also, I'm still living with my roommate, and I'm tired of doing that. I want to find my own apartment. It can't be too expensive, so I'll probably have to get something small. But it will be great to have my own place. Listen and practice. Transportation today. Today, every country in the world uses water, air, and land transportation to trade food, fuel, clothes, and other goods like cars and televisions. Tourists started to go on vacation by train and boat 200 years ago. From about 1960, with the invention of large passenger planes, tourism became very popular. Today, about 900 million tourists travel to another country every year. In 2001, an American called Dennis Tito 
was the first space tourist. He flew in a Russian spaceship to the International Space Station. Will tourists travel to the moon one day? Listen and practice. Tropical climates. In tropical climates, the weather is hot and wet. People need homes to protect them from sun, wind, and rain. Lots of forests grow here, and the people use the trees to make wooden houses. Mud bricks would break. There are often floods in tropical climates, so people build houses on stilts. The stilts keep the house cool and protect it from snakes and water. Long roofs provide shade, and wooden shutters on the windows keep the sun out. Listen and practice. Waste and pollution. We throw away too much waste, and this is bad for our planet. We need to reduce the amount of waste that we produce. We can recycle more things like paper, plastic, glass, and metal. Our cars and factories produce smoke that pollutes the air. In some cities, it can be difficult to breathe because there's so much pollution in the air. Some factories pollute our water and soil. We should build more modern factories that don't produce so much pollution. Listen and practice. Homes for poor people. Poor people often don't have enough money to buy or build their own home. Some families share small apartments with other families. The whole family sleeps in one room, and two or three families share one bathroom. Some very poor people can't live with other families. So, they have to build homes with things that other people throw away, like bits of metal, fabric, or wood. Places where there are lots of these homes together are called shanty towns. There's no electricity or running water. Many people today are homeless and do not have a home at all. Homeless people sometimes sleep on the street in big cities. In some places, there are shelters where they can stay, but sometimes the only thing they have is a cardboard box. Listen and practice. Homes for rich people. Rich people sometimes live in big houses called mansions. They have electricity, running water, central heating, air conditioning, nice bathrooms, expensive furniture, carpets, and sometimes even swimming pools. They often have big gardens too. The mansion below is in Thailand. It is made of a wood called teak. A natural oil in the wood protects it from the weather and insects. Teak is very good for building houses and furniture. Listen and practice.
This is a nice part of the city to relax in. I often come here for a walk on the weekend. It's a great place to listen to the birds and smell the flowers. It looks as if it's been here for years, but actually, it was only opened a couple of years ago. There used to be lots of old factories here, but the city decided to tear them all down because we didn't have enough green space in the city. Listen and practice. Joanne Kathleen Rowling, author of the best selling Harry Potter series of books, was born in 1965 near Bristol, England. Her birthday, July 31st, is the same as her famous hero, Harry Potter. Joanne did well in school. Her favorite subjects were English and foreign languages and she studied French in school. She graduated in 1986, and over the next few years, had a variety of jobs. However, her passion was writing. She had written her first story, Rabbit, about a rabbit with measles, at age six. She started writing the first Harry Potter book in 1990, the idea for Harry, a lonely 11-year-old orphan who was actually a wizard, came to Rowling while she was traveling by train between Manchester and London. Although she left England a short time after that to teach English in Portugal, she continued to write Harry's story. She returned to Britain in 1993 and settled in Scotland. It was a difficult time, she was out of work and depressed, but finally completed her first book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It was published in Britain in 1997 and quickly became a hit with both children and adults. J.K.R. has been writing Harry Potter books for nearly 20 years. She writes in longhand, and each book takes one year to complete. She has now completed the series of seven Harry Potter books. The last book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, came out in July 2007. Her books have won numerous awards, including Children's Book of the Year. She married Dr. Neil Murray in 2001. She has had three children, a boy, David, and two girls, Mackenzie and Jessica. The books have been translated into over 60 languages, and over 300 million copies have been sold worldwide. The first six books have been made into movies. She has become the highest-earning woman in Britain, richer than the Queen. She has made over 600 million pounds, more than one billion dollars. This makes her the first person ever to have become a billionaire from writing books. Listen and practice. Staying healthy. The best way to stay well is to stay healthy. Try to have a healthy diet and drink eight glasses of water every day and more when it's hot. Keep clean. Take a shower often, brush your teeth every day, and wash your hands after going to the toilet and before you eat. Most of us know that exercise helps us to stay healthy. But did you know that people do more exercise if they do a sport that they like or that they can do with friends? What do you do to stay healthy? Listen and practice. Homes that float.
Lots of people in the world live on houseboats. People sleep, cook, eat, and sometimes work on them. Some houseboats are used as floating shops, so you don't have to get to land to buy food. Some people live on canal boats. These boats are long and narrow, so that they can travel along narrow rivers or canals. About 200 years ago, these boats carried materials for big industries, but today, the boats are used as homes. Listen and practice. Vacation homes. Many people like to go camping. They sleep in tents and cook their food outside on a fire. Some people have two homes, one home for the winter and one for the summer, and they move between them. The home doesn't move, but the people do. Some people drive motor homes, or RVs. These are like a big car or van that you can live in. Many people like to drive in these on vacation because they can travel to lots of different places and see the countryside. You don't need to sleep outside caravans or RVs. The seats and tables change into beds at night. Listen and practice. Living without a home. Some people's homes are destroyed by hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, or wars. People then live together in refugee camps and they all try to help each other. Sometimes, people have to live here for many years. About 12 million people live in refugee camps. There are refugee camps in over 100 countries in the world. Listen and practice. In Europe, North America, and Australia, most people live in homes built for one family. Old people often live in a separate home. Sometimes they live near their families, but sometimes they are far away. Some old people live in an old people's home with lots of other people. They can talk, play games, and keep each other company when they can't see their families. Children with no parents are called orphans. If they have no other family to look after them, they can live together in a big home called an orphanage. Listen and practice. Our climates are changing, and there are more and more hurricanes and floods. How can we protect our homes? Some new homes have walls made of steel and concrete. They won't fall down in a hurricane. Architects are also designing homes for the future that will float. Scientists are investigating new waterproof materials for homes. People living in brick houses can die in earthquakes if the houses fall on them. New homes made from cement and foam won't fall down in an earthquake because they are light. They are cheap to make and environmentally friendly. Listen and practice.
Explorers are people who leave their home to discover new places or to learn new things about people, plants, or animals. To learn more about our world, they go on exciting journeys through forests, across hot or icy deserts, up mountains, or down rivers. Thousands of years ago, early people knew about only a very small part of the world. Today, we know a lot more, and some of our information comes from explorers. Explorers have changed the world. Explorers are people who leave their home to discover new places or to learn new things about people, plants, or animals. To learn more about our world, they go on exciting journeys through forests, across hot or icy deserts, up mountains, or down rivers. Thousands of years ago, Early people knew about only a very small part of the world. Today, we know a lot more. And some of our information comes from explorers. Explorers have changed the world. Listen and practice. In India, there are many different types of dance. Bollywood dance is very popular, and many people are learning it in their free time. This type of dance is fast and colorful. Bollywood is the name of India's most famous movie industry. In Bollywood movies, there is always singing and dancing. Bollywood is the biggest movie industry in the world. It makes about 1,000 movies every year. Bollywood dancers wear colorful clothes. They also wear jewelry like earrings, necklaces, and lots of bangles. Between their eyebrows, they have a mark or jewel called a bindi. Listen and practice. At the end of the school year, before everyone goes off on vacation, my classmates like to have a picnic. We go to a nice place by the river, and everyone brings something to eat. It's a time when we talk about our plans for the summer. Usually it's nice and warm, and we all like to go swimming in the river. Listen and practice. One of my friends invited me to see a movie with her last week. I was sure she'd said Wednesday night, and I'd written it down on my calendar as Wednesday. On Tuesday night, I didn't come home until late because I had gone to a friend's house for dinner, and I had left my cell phone at home. When I got home, there was an angry message on my voicemail from my friend, and she'd sent me several texts. We were supposed to see the movie Tuesday night, and she'd waited for me in front of the theater for an hour. Listen and practice. I want to do something useful before I go to college next year, so I'm going to work in an old people's home as soon as I finish school. My job is to work with the nurses and help the people get dressed, and I'll go for walks with them. Things like that. The job starts in July, and it's for at least nine months. I'll also live in the home while I'm working there. I'll work until I've saved enough money for a vacation. I'm going to Florida with some friends after the job ends. I'll need to relax. I won't be tired if I have a vacation before school starts.
Listen and practice. I grew up near Chicago. I really wanted to be a gym teacher at a school. I love sports, and I used to play them a lot. After I graduated, I tried to get a job as a gym teacher in my town, but I couldn't. I didn't want to move away because my father was sick, so I had to find something else to do. Well, I was always kind of interested in cooking. My mom taught me to cook, and I often used to make meals for the family when I was a kid. Anyway, my dad's friend had a small restaurant, and he asked me if I'd like to help out. My first job was helping in the kitchen, and that's where I really learned to cook. I used to watch the chefs at work so that I could pick up their techniques. Then, a year later, the owner asked me to be one of the chefs. Then, a couple of years ago, I decided to open up my own restaurant. It's done really well. We have three chefs, and we're usually very busy, especially on the weekends. Listen and practice. Well, I speak Spanish pretty well, so before I go to college, I'm going to travel around South America. I have an old friend from school in Brazil and a pen pal in Chile, so I have some people to visit. I also want to go and see the rainforest. I'm working in a local restaurant right now, but as soon as I have enough money, I'll book a flight to Rio de Janeiro. I'll spend about a month in Brazil, then go on to Chile, I think. I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be fantastic. When I'm traveling around, I'll call home twice a week. If I don't keep in touch, I know my parents will worry. Listen and practice. When any of us has a birthday, the rule is that we all go out together. We like to get a nice present and treat the birthday person to dinner at a restaurant, but it's nice just to get together. We've been doing this now for over 10 years, ever since we became friends at college. It's a way to keep in touch and a time to catch up on what's been happening with everyone. Listen and practice. For Thanksgiving, we usually like to get together with some of the neighbors for a big dinner. We take turns having it at each other's homes. It's fun because it's a time when the guys do all the cooking. But the menu is always the same. Roast turkey with stuffing and mashed potatoes. After a fabulous dinner, we watch a football game together on TV. Listen and practice. Early people traveled around to find food and water. Most explorers travel because they are curious and want to discover new places and to learn new things. Some early explorers hope to get rich by discovering new plants, animals, or treasures, and by selling them when they got home. Today, Explorers travel to have an adventure, to learn more about remote places, to find something new to help science, or maybe to be famous. Listen and practice. Until about 10,000 years ago, people lived in small family groups 
and they didn't travel a lot. Then, as villages and towns became bigger, people had to travel to find food. People used animals to carry goods like meat and fur. Then, about 6,000 years ago, people started to travel long distances to trade metals, salt, and spices. Ships began trading in the Middle East 4,500 years ago. People used ships because animals could not travel over water. Soon, people were trading all around Europe and Asia. Listen and practice. In 1804, Richard Trevithick built the first train in Wales in the United Kingdom. Its steam engine used coal to heat water. The hot water made steam, and the steam powered the engine. The train moved along two metal tracks called a railroad. In 1825, the world's first railroad system opened in the United Kingdom. Soon, railroads with steam trains were common all around the world. By 1930, steam trains could travel at about 150 kilometers per hour. Listen and practice. In 1862, the first underground train system opened in London in the United Kingdom. Today, more than 160 cities around the world have underground trains. Modern trains have electric motors or diesel engines. Some long-distance trains have restaurants and sleeper cars with beds for passengers to sleep in. Trains are good because they use less fuel per passenger than cars, buses, or planes. Some high-speed trains can travel at more than 300 kilometers per hour. Listen and practice. The first fish appeared about 510 million years ago. They were Earth's first vertebrates, animals with a backbone. Today, there are about 24,000 different types of fish. All of them have gills to take oxygen from water. Most of them also have fins and a tail to help them to swim. Scientists think that amphibians evolved from fish that lived in shallow water. About 400 million years ago, amphibians became the first vertebrates that lived on land and walked on legs. Young amphibians have gills, but then they grow lungs so that they can breathe air. There are more than 4,000 species of amphibian today, like frogs, toads, and salamanders. Listen and practice. Why do people dislike other people? Some people don't like other people just because they look different. I think that is silly. I don't think that it is fair to judge someone by the way they look. Some people look very nice, but they are mean or cruel. Some people look very ordinary, but they are incredibly nice. I remember when I was in grade one. I saw a girl across the room. She had a mean look on her face. I thought to myself that she was probably not a very nice person. I stayed away from her and played with the other children. Then we had to play a game, and the teacher said that she would pick partners for us. 
The teacher picked the girl with the mean face as my partner. I didn't think that the game would be much fun at all with a partner who seemed as mean as that girl. I walked up to her and said hello. The girl's face changed. She smiled at me and she began to talk to me. Her mean face disappeared. We had lots of fun playing the game. We laughed a lot and enjoyed each other's company. That girl became my best friend. Now, when I look at her, I see what is inside her. Sometimes she doesn't smile, but I know what she is like. She is a kind and funny person. I have learned that you can't judge a book by its cover. It is not fair to dislike someone just because they don't look like you want them to look. You have to get to know a person. It doesn't matter to me what color a person's skin is. It doesn't matter to me if they are short or tall, skinny or fat, or happy or sad looking. I judge people by how they treat me, and I try to treat people like I would want to be treated. Listen and practice. At some schools, children wear special clothes. We call these clothes school uniform. School uniforms are made in the school's special colors. They often have the school's badge on the front of the jacket or the sweater. Some schools. Have different uniforms for summer and for winter. School uniforms don't have much decoration. There is sometimes a jacket and a tie, and maybe a hat. In the language of clothes, a school uniform says, "I'm a serious student and I work hard." Listen and practice. Like most clothes today, children's clothes are made by machines in factories. Children's clothes can be made more quickly and cheaply than in the past, so more people can buy them. When children play, their clothes get dirty. Today's clothes are easy to wash and dry because some of the fabrics are synthetic. Children's clothes are usually brighter than adults' clothes. Young children like bright, happy colors. Listen and practice. Horses pulled the first buses two hundred years ago. Buses became popular as cities became bigger, because people traveled on buses to get to work. Modern buses have diesel engines or electric motors. Most buses can carry more than forty passengers, and some very long articulated buses can carry one hundred and twenty people. In many countries, special buses take children to school. In places with no trains, buses carry passengers long distances between cities. In some countries, buses carry a lot of passengers and goods. Listen and practice. Our cars, factories, and power stations produce too many gases, like carbon dioxide. Earth is getting warmer because there's too much carbon dioxide in the air. This is called global warming. Global warming means that there are more storms and rain. More ice is melting in the Arctic and the Antarctic, so the sea level is getting higher. And some islands are disappearing.
A few islands between India and Bangladesh have already disappeared underwater. Listen and practice. Some islands in the Pacific Ocean will probably disappear in 100 years if we don't slow down global warming. Some of the Maldive Islands in the Indian Ocean will probably disappear sooner. Most of the land is less than two meters above sea level. We can try to slow down global warming by making less carbon dioxide. We can drive and fly less, and we can use cleaner cars. We should use less coal and oil to make electricity. There are cleaner ways of making electricity. Listen and practice. Can you imagine a world without cars? We have only had cars for about 120 years. People laughed at the first cars. They were slow and noisy. Two German engineers, Daimler and Benz, made the first car with a gasoline engine in 1885. It only had three wheels. From about 1905, companies like Rolls-Royce started to make cars. They were very expensive because people made each car by hand. Then, in 1913, the Ford Motor Company started to make their Model T car in a special factory. Ford's factories produced cars quickly, so the Model T was less expensive than other cars. By 1927, there were more than 15 million Model Ts on the roads. Listen and practice. The world needs to produce less pollution. Electric motors produce less pollution than diesel and gasoline engines. Will all vehicles have electric motors one day? What will transportation be like in the future? Some modern cars use biodiesel. Biodiesel comes from plants, and it's a clean fuel. We can also produce clean energy from the sun and the wind. Machines can put this energy into batteries that power electric motors. In the future, most cars will have electric motors or they will use biodiesel. Listen and practice. Electricity moves through some materials. Electricity moves fast through metal. Metal wires take electricity from power stations to our homes. Electricity moves through water, too. Don't touch electric machines with wet hands. You can get an electric shock. Electricity can't move through some materials. Electricity can't move through plastic or glass. These things stop electricity moving. Listen and practice. It is going to be my father's birthday. What can I give him? I don't have much money. 
I have looked all through the stores, and I have not found anything that I think he would like or that I can afford. I have thought very hard about what to buy for him. I thought that he might like some candy, but my father really doesn't eat many sweets. I thought that he might like a new shirt, but he has lots of clothes. I can't afford a new car or computer for him. I was watching him on the weekend. He cut the grass, washed the car, took out the garbage, weeded the garden, and watered the plants. I got an idea. I went to my room and took out some paper. I cut out pieces of paper and I wrote on them. I wrote on one piece of paper that I would wash the car every weekend for the summer. I wrote on another piece that I would take out the garbage every week for the summer. I also wrote that I would cut the grass, weed the garden, and water the plants every week for the summer. I made a birthday card for my dad, and I put the pieces of paper inside it. I went downstairs and gave my gift to my dad. My dad thought that the gift was very thoughtful. He said that it was a gift from the heart. I did all those things for my dad all summer. He said that he had a lot of free time because I helped him so much. My dad and I are good friends. I don't mind doing things for him because I know that he is always there to help me out. A good gift doesn't have to be something that costs a lot. My dad says that the best gifts are the ones that show how much you care for the other person. I'm glad my dad liked his gift. Listen and practice. A very long time ago, people didn't build homes. They slept in forests and caves, hunted animals, and collected fruit. They also made things from materials that they found around them. People made the first tools from a stone called flint. They used the flints in their hands, or they fixed them to pieces of wood or animal bones. People used flint tools to cut wood and to hunt animals. In cold countries, they used animal fur to make clothes and shoes. Listen and practice. People used wood and plants to make shelters, simple places to sleep in. They cut wood from trees to make the shape of the shelter. Then they used other plants to make the roof and the walls. Some people still make homes like this today. People used grass to make threads. They pushed threads over and under other threads to make clothes and beds. This is called weaving. They also made baskets by weaving thin sticks. Baskets are great for carrying food and catching fish. Listen and practice. Paper. People made the first paper from small plants, but now they make most paper from trees. At a factory, people mix small pieces of wood with chemicals and water to make a liquid called pulp. Later, machines make the pulp flat. Then they heat it to make it dry. Then long pieces of paper come out of a machine and go onto a roll. We print on paper to make books, and we fix paper together to produce cardboard for making boxes. We should not waste paper because we cut down trees to make it, and it's bad to cut down too many trees. 
We can reuse old paper to make new things. For example, newspapers, or even materials for building things. Listen and practice. Cotton. Cotton comes from the flowers of the cotton plant. Farmers grow the plants and collect round pieces of cotton from them. People use machines to wash the cotton and to pull it into long strings called fibers. Then machines spin the fibers into cotton threads. Other machines weave cotton threads into fabric. People use the fabric to make lots of things, like clothes and curtains. People can use special colors called dyes to make the fabric different colors. Listen and practice. Wool. Wool comes from sheep and other animals. Sheep grow a coat of wool to keep them warm. Once a year, farmers cut the wool off the sheep. This is called shearing. Farmers can collect the wool from hundreds of sheep in one day. People pull wool into fibers and spin it. This usually happens in factories, but some people still spin wool at home. Wool is very soft and warm, so it's great for making sweaters and socks. Listen and practice. Incredible oil. Sneakers, plastic toys. Plastic shopping bags and lots of other things are made from chemicals that come from oil. Oil is made from tiny plants and animals that lived in the seas and oceans millions of years ago. After they died, the sand above them slowly became rock. The rock and heat under the ground changed them into a black liquid called oil, and a gas. Called natural gas. It takes millions of years to make oil, but we are using it very fast. In a hundred years, there won't be any oil if we don't use it more slowly. Listen and practice. Recycled materials. People are making new materials all the time. We use them to make bigger planes, warmer clothes, thinner televisions, and products that are better for our world. It's bad for our world to throw away too many things. This uses energy and materials and produces waste. It's good to recycle as much waste as possible. Then, in factories, people can make new materials from these recycled materials. We use new materials made from recycled plastic inside cars because these materials are light and strong. Listen and practice. A funny thing happened on the way to school. Last Friday, it was very windy. I was walking down the street with my friend John. We were having a difficult time walking against the wind. 
The wind was pushing against us, and we felt the force of it pressing against us. We even had a hard time breathing. We were walking slowly. We watched the leaves as they danced and twirled in the wind. We watched a plastic bag as it flew by us. We saw a little boy whose baseball cap flew right off his head. His cap flew along the sidewalk, and he had to chase it. He finally caught it, and he held it in his hands tightly after he got it back. The trees were swaying frantically. Their branches swished and waved in the wild wind. John and I were hit by flying bits of paper and leaves. We laughed when a garbage can lid rolled along and hit John in the leg. We saw another garbage can rolling along the road as if it was alive. Everything was moving because of the wind. Then the funniest thing happened. I wasn't paying any attention, and a paper bag came flying up the street toward us. It hit me right in the face and covered my whole face. At first, I didn't know what had happened. I was blinded. I couldn't see where I was going. I stopped and held out my hands. When I stopped, the bag fell off my face. I looked at John. He was laughing very hard. He was laughing so hard that tears were rolling down his cheeks. He said that I looked very funny with the brown paper bag stuck to my face. I started to laugh too. We laughed about it all the way to school. John said that he wished he had a camera. He would have taken a picture of me with a bag on my face. Listen and practice. Once upon a time, a young businessman married the most beautiful girl in the city. They loved each other very much. One day, she developed a skin disease. Slowly, she started to lose her beauty. It so happened that one day her husband left for a business trip. While returning, he had an accident and lost his eyesight. However. Their married life continued as usual, but as days passed, she lost her beauty gradually. The blind husband seemed that he did not know this, and there was not any difference in their married life. He continued to love her, and she also loved him very much. One day she died. Her death brought him great sorrow. He finished all her last rites and wanted to leave that town. A man from behind called and said, "Now, how will you be able to walk all alone? All these days your wife used to help you." He replied. I am not blind. I was acting, because if she knew I could see her skin condition due to a disease, it would have pained her more than her disease. I didn't love her for her beauty alone, but I fell in love with her caring, loving nature. So I pretended to be blind. I only wanted to keep her happy. Listen and practice. My favorite bedtime story. Every night when I was little, my mother would read me a bedtime story. My favorite story was Tom's Midnight Garden. This was a story by Philippa Pierce. 
It was quite a long book, and it took quite a few nights for my mother to read the entire book to me. In Tom's Midnight Garden, Tom moves to the city to stay with his aunt and uncle. He is very bored at their apartment. They have no children, so Tom has nothing to do. One night, the clock strikes thirteen times. Tom knows that this is impossible. A clock can only strike up to twelve times. He sneaks downstairs and goes outside. When he goes outside, there is a wonderful garden that wasn't there the day before. The next day, Tom goes outside and finds there is no garden. The garden only seems to appear at night. Every night, Tom slips out to this wonderful garden and meets some people in the garden. He meets a girl named Hattie. Hattie and Tom become very good friends in this garden. Some very strange things happen in this book. There are some coincidences that keep you guessing about what is really going on. The surprise ending is wonderful. I really enjoyed Tom's Midnight Garden, and I was very sad when my mother and I came to the end of the book. I felt that I had visited the magical garden with Tom. It is a book that I will remember all my life. Listen and practice. The sky. Go outside and look up. What can you see? You can see the sky. The sky. Is above you. Look at the sky. Is it day or night? What can you see in the sky? Look at the sky in the day. What color is it? Can you see clouds? When it's sunny, the sky is blue. Clouds are white or gray. Sometimes you can see birds and planes. They fly in the sky. Sometimes, when it's sunny and rainy, you can see a rainbow in the sky. A spacecraft goes up into the sky. Then it goes into space. Space is dark and very big. Listen and practice. The sun. Do you know the sun is a star? It's our star. We live on a planet called Earth. Earth goes around the sun. The sun shines in the sky. It gives our planet light. Don't look at the sun. It isn't good for your eyes. The sun is very, very hot. It makes our planet warm, so we can live here. We get electricity from the sun. Light from the sun shines on solar panels. This makes electricity.
Listen and practice. At night. At night, the sky is dark. You can see the moon. The moon is a big ball of rock. Sometimes you see a round moon. This is called a full moon. Sometimes you see different shapes. A thin moon is called a crescent moon. You can see stars at night, too. Stars are big, hot balls of fire. They look very little because they are far out in space. Sometimes you can see planets, too. Listen and practice. Planets. A planet goes around a star. Eight planets go around the sun. The sun and its planets are called the solar system. The planets are all different. Jupiter is big and Mercury is little. Venus is hot and Neptune is cold. Saturn has lots of rings. Many planets have moons. A moon goes around a planet. Earth has one moon. We call it the moon. Some planets have lots of moons. Listen and practice. Stars. Stars can look red, orange, yellow, blue, or white. The sun is a yellow star. You can see patterns of stars in the sky. The patterns are called constellations. With a telescope, you can see more stars. The Hubble Space Telescope is a very big telescope out in space. It takes photos of stars. A galaxy is lots of stars. There are many millions of stars in one galaxy. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. Listen and practice. Poultry. Chickens and other birds on farms are called poultry. We get meat, eggs, and feathers from poultry. Free-range chickens live outside. Eggs from free-range chickens are very good for you.
On other farms, chickens live in big barns with lots of other chickens. These farms are called factory farms. Ducks and geese live outside. We use their feathers to make pillows and quilts for our beds. Some farmers keep ostriches for their eggs, meat, and feathers. Listen and practice. Cattle. Farmers keep cattle for meat and for milk. In spring and summer, cattle live in fields and eat lots of grass. In winter, some cattle live in barns. Then they eat dried grass called hay. Ranches are very big farms. They have lots of fields and lots of cattle. On ranches, farmers use horses to move cattle. Farmers milk their cattle every morning and evening. They milk the cattle by hand or with milking machines. We drink the milk. We also make milk into cheese, butter, cream, and yogurt. Listen and practice. Sheep. All around the world, there are sheep on farms. We get wool, meat, and milk from sheep. Sheep can live outside all year. They have a woolen coat called a fleece. We use the fleece to make wool. Then we make hats, coats, and socks from the wool. A lamb drinks its mother's milk. Some sheep can't feed all their lambs. The farmer feeds these lambs with milk from a bottle. Later, lambs eat grass. Sheep eat grass too. Listen and practice. Crops. Crops only grow in the right weather, and with water and good soil. Bananas and pineapples only grow in hot weather. Strawberries and other soft fruit grow in cool weather. A lot of sugar comes from a crop called sugar cane. Sugar cane can grow nine meters high. Rice only grows in lots of water. 
Many farmers grow rice in terraces. Some farmers cut rice terraces into mountains. Wheat grows in big fields. We make flour from wheat. We use flour to make bread, pasta, and cakes.